Христос воскресе. Want to say congratulations for everybody with uh, today's uh, uh, holiday or the remembrance of Thomas Sunday, the first Sunday after Pascha. Um, last week, uh, Thursday, I did a uh, presentation, um, but uh, not a lot of people showed up and they asked me to recap some of the important things that uh, we talked about. And one of the important things that we talked about is the origins of the beginnings of where the uh, priestless started. If we go back into history, priestlessness started way before Nikon, way before Nikon. And it started right here in Novgorod and Skoshin, these, these regions. The people there, they were not uh, very obedient either to uh, to, to the rulers, uh, to Knyazya or Yerbayarov. And they were very self-independent and self... Uh, they were a little arrogant and they... They wanted to control everything. And as a matter of fact, in the 1500s, I think uh, somebody helped me with my... Uh, Research. I think it was uh, Archiepiscop Makari. He was right in the middle of the 15th century, and I, uh, I think it's, it was him. But they got down to the point where they kicked out their archbishop out of town. That's how they were. That's uh, that's how stubborn and uh, tempting they were that they even threw out their archbishop. But of course, afterwards, uh, they, um, they saw that they made a mistake and they called him back and he, he came back to his seat. The Baltic States was where Bispo Poshina actually started. They're the founders and they're the fathers of all Bispo Poshina, what we know today. There were a lot, uh, there were in the thousands, there were in the thousands uh, uh, of, um, um, of people there. Uh, I was in Latvia and through Estonia and Lithuania. Just in Latvia, there's over 50 parishes that, are, that were uh, active, uh, like I can, I can say, by like 20, uh, 10, 15 years ago. Over 50 parishes that were active. And out there, there's a Tampiesi Stara Pomorce, yes, Brachniki, Nibrachniki. They divided amongst themselves down there. Some did, like, accepted uh, marriage, some did not accept marriage. And um, even before Nikon, they, uh, they stopped accepting priests in their parishes. And their last. Uh, uh, priest was by the name of uh, priest, priest Terenti, especially Rey Terenti. And um, he tried to convince all the elders, because Tam Nachal is a Starchistva. Starchistva and a Starchistva, because there was some Bliskite, Yemalen, and everything, everything. And so they started this practice of Starchistva and Nastamichistva. And he was the only one that was for the few thousand people there. And of course he passed away, I don't think he passed away from natural causes, but he just got exhausted. Because one priest for few thousand people, that's unbelievable, that's unbelievable. You know, as, as much of a parish that we have, and we have two priests, and we are quote unquote just barely catching up. Like the, the busiest season is uh, post, well, you know, confessions, communions, confessions, communions, and uh, today we're getting some rest. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the last priest there, he passed away right, right at the time when uh, Nikon came around, or he was uh, made a, a patriarch of Moscow. Moscow. So uh, uh, to make things even worse. They rejected all the orth, uh, Orthodox priests. And then here comes Nikon changing 
a uh, few things in, in the church that made it even worse. So they stopped accepting all, all clergy. They accepted no bishops, no priests, and no deacons. And all they had for themselves was right here, empty bag, empty bag, uh, Minister Joe, a fake and a fraud. That's all what they had. So by rejecting the bishops, priests, and deacons ordained, they became enemies of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. They became enemies. You know, not to say no, uh, no thanks to, to the foul evil spirits that helped them along to make a, this decision, but they rejected all clergy. And they started this um, theory, idea that the church ceased to exist. This was only right here in the Baltic states. The Baltic states and uh, Novgorod and Pskov. Pskov. They were the only ones that rejected the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Today's Bispopoets, they have the same theory, same understanding that nowhere on earth is there a valid priesthood. So that's why they go by empty bag, Minister Joe. That's what they have. But the Lord said that the gates of hell uh, will not prevail over the church. They um, they interpret in their, in their own way that they become the true church and not this church what the Lord promised. They've changed uh, the understanding of true Holy Communion. They, they came up with the idea of uh, substituting Holy Communion with with their decades old diluted water. That's where all this started. And today's Bispopoza, the priestless, they are following that same theology and same teaching. That was not the case with the rest of the uh, uh, Orthodox people. Here, uh, between uh, Belarus and um, Poland, after uh, the schism of uh, the Russian Orthodox Church, they started to accept right away uh, new pri uh, uh, priests from uh, ordination from the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, and that place was uh, in, in Poland and Belarus. It's, uh, the, the, there's an island or a rica called Vietka. So that's how the, the name got, uh, the place got that name, Vietkovsky Tsertov. The other big um, population was, where's Kazakhstan? Okay, okay, right here, thank you. They had in the thousands uh, uh, there, they had many, many monasteries and skids and churches. Uh, they had priesthood that they accepted from, uh, from the Russian Orthodox Church, uh, and through uh, Yirgiz, mostly they, uh, they supplied priests into Siberia and all of this area. The Orthodox people here in the, um, uh, on the Vietka, they supplied the people mostly uh, around here and, and south into what today is Romania or in, in Ukraine, on the, on the border of U uh, Ukraine and Romania, there's a call, uh, I was there uh, many times. 
Uh, right now, there is only a limited amount of uh, nuns there, but the church is active there. So they supplied Dupaginsta for that part. As a matter of fact, the Vietka, in the, I think in 1780 or 90, they accepted a bishop, uh, but he was old, and uh, and uh, he did not uh, make it to uh, to ordain anybody. He passed away quickly. So in, in 1846, when the Sarajevo found Metropolit uh, Ambrosi, he he was accepted into the church in Belikrinitsa, someplace right here. So that's. Um, that's the short history of where the, 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 the priestess started. Today, the priestess, they have this, um, they follow this uh, teaching that nowhere on planet Earth is there any valid uh, priesthood. So they say that they are living in emergency, emergency situations where uh, their minister, empty bag Joe, that he is going to be doing their services, which is not the one holy Catholic and the uh, apostolic church. So today, uh, sadly to say this, but the priestless are as much enemies to the Orthodox Church as the founders and the fathers of uh, late uh, uh, 17, uh, no, uh, late 1600s, uh, where the Pomorts started. Same uh, uh, enemy to the church. That's why uh, they have no shame in, um, in, in the stuff that they say against the church, uh, especially about uh, Holy uh, Communion, Holy Chrismation, and anything that is holy, they have no shame in blasphemizing it, down to the point of calling it to human feces. Uh, yes, uh, uh, that's what they say. I lived through those times in the uh, 1980s. That's what they call it. And uh, today, uh, these are the children. This generation is the children of the fathers that persecuted us in 1980s. These are the children. Three, four generations ago, the priestless old believers did not have that understanding of that that the church is gone and there's no more orthodox uh, orthodox priesthood around. And the fact that the um, that that is true is uh, like I said uh, on my last presentation that uh, Leo Yakis's, I think, grandfather or great-grandfather, he was sent back to Romania to get ordained to be a priest. That is one fact. The other fact is that most of the uh, priestless uh, Turciana, they have at home what they call their Prichastia, but uh, all of you, my, my parishioners, know that Prichastia is never given into hands. Prichastia always only from the chalice. Only from the chalice. What's given into uh, everybody's hands is Svete Yadore, Ili Je Prosira, Ili Senoshna Kievushuk. That's the only things that are given uh, uh, into people's hands. And they have one of the three, but they do not have. You guys are witnesses to it because you guys live the Orthodox life. I, as a priest, I know I do not give nobody uh, and um, they are um, false, they live by false hope. They live by false hope. They're just hoping that it is Prichastia. But I can very much assuredly tell them. 100% that it is not. It is not. It is either Prostina, Dora, it is One of the two. Even Harbina, in the last 
three generations ago. They were looking for priesthood while they still lived in Siberia or in East Russia. But because of poverty, both for us in Turkey and for anybody there, everybody lived in poverty. The fastest thing that could do, that could move was a horse. And if, if you had a horse, because some people could not even afford horses. Um, so, you know, they didn't have snail mail either. You know, today we have the USPS, which is snail mail, but uh, today we're living in a world of electronic where we can just uh, push a button, boom, uh, somebody's got email or somebody got a message. I have to go back to those times when they lived and the circumstances that they had, and it was a lack of communication and a lack of uh, sending things back and forth. So the mindset of three, four generations ago of the old believers at this Bapose is very, very, very different than the mindset of today. If, uh, if you guys were listening to uh, that lady, uh, well, she calls herself Big Mouth. I'm not going to, well, she calls herself the Big Mouth Irene. Well, in one of her audio cassettes, she says that they have the faith, or they are in that faith that Jesus Christ was, the apostles were, the Holy Fathers were, and they're the same faith as them. She's actually lying because she thinks she's trying to tell everybody that Lord Jesus Christ Himself was a best pope or bits or priestless. Can you really put, uh, comprehend with that? Or the apostles? They were best popes, and and through sixteen or twenty the twenty centuries. All, all the churches were best or both sin. And uh, the whole thing, what, what amazes me is this. You know, they, they have some good people. Nobody will even tell her, lady, you know, do your homework. Do your homework before you say this very publicly to all. No, because they are all of the one mindset that that is the way it is. <coughs> So when I say that they are enemies of the church, they are enemies of the church. They are enemies of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I know they're going to be upset with me with that, but I'm here to say the truth. Uh, I'm not going to give nobody um, a jalapeno and put it in uh, honey and give it to them and tell them that's a sweet pepper. Uh, I don't do that. There's uh, they're doing a good job at it, and I'm just uh, exploiting them. <coughs> because the Bispovots are not uh, in the church, they really have no idea how the church functions. And this is, uh, I'm getting ready for my next subject. And I want to explain that uh, they, even though they think they know, but they are deceiving and not telling you the truth. For instance, I'm going to use an analogy. I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer. But I grow a specific crop. I grow, I grow only cane berries. I grow marions and uh, Columbia star. I am not a strawberry farmer. I am not a raspberry farmer. I am not a blueberry farmer. Because it takes, um, it takes education or uh, practice to grow those things. It grows uh, those uh, uh, varieties, those berries. I'm only a dairy farmer. My knowledge to all the other things are limited. I don't know how to grow uh, uh, hops or filberts or anything like that because even though I'm a farmer, but that's not my specialty. Or you might be a, a carpenter. Yes, I can be a carpenter. I'll build you anything. But I'm very guaranteed that it's going to stand because I'm not an engineer. I'll build it, and the first wind and the first storm that comes along, um, <laughs> I guarantee you, it's going to go down. <laughs> or I'm not an electrician. Well, I know how to put, uh, you know, the white wire goes to the white wire, black goes to the black, and the ground to the ground. 
as far as I know. But am I an electrician? No, I am not an electrician. If I wire your house, be prepared for it to burn down. Because <laughs> I am not what I am. And the Bispo Boats, they think that they know the life of how a church uh, lives or functions. They are not even in kindergarten. They're not even in kindergarten. They have not even stepped into school yet. Just because they learn how to read and whatever, whatever, whatever. No, they are immune. They don't know. They don't know the functions of a bishop. They don't know the functions of a priest. And they don't know the functions of a deacon. The only thing functions that they know is right there, empty head, I mean empty bag, uh, Minister Joe. And he can do whatever he wants because he is not set by bound by rules or, or bound by any any laws. We are all bound by laws and what we can do and what we cannot do. Because they don't have because they don't have the priesthood, they really have no idea of how the church functions. Can we turn this on, shall we? Okay, this is a little blurry. Can we... Uh... Okay. This is uh, on the authority of, uh, of a bishop. And here's a, here's, here's an uh, uh, excerpt from Святой Иван Затовысна, 4 послание. And he says, he has, he asks the question, don't you know what a priest is? And he answers himself, he's an angel of God. He's an angel of God. Then further he goes, does he talk, uh, uh, does he say his own? And if you don't care to um, listen to him, that, then you're not only not listening to him, but you are not listening to God who ordained him. I'm trying to do an interpretation here. It's rough, but... Uh, uh, and, and further he goes, but uh, where do we know this? That God ordained him. And, and he answers you, that if you do not have that thought, then uh, your idea is that. Hope. Yeah, your, your hope is of nothing. If you believe that God does not uh, uh, act through him, then you don't have Banyu Yimusha, which means you don't, then you don't have baptism. And you don't have the sacrament of Richastia. You don't have the Blagoslavenia, the blessing pre the, the blessings that the, the, uh, that the faithful receive. And then you are not even a Christian. Because the, the priests list, they have they believe in the Omorske church, and especially their writers. And as one of them uh, quoted Pichugin, uh, who was a very, very ardent uh, enemy of the church, they are writing, and they're listening and copying his uh, writings uh, and spreading them around as gospel truth. But that guy is a heretic himself. And by, even by their own standards, he, they would not even accept them. But yet, they are hiding this from the rest of all their parishioners. And they're putting his uh, teachings out there to um, deceive everybody. And then there's Vladimir Simeon Solunsky. He's a, a father, I think, in the fourth, 14th century or, or 15th century. He goes, listen, not, uh, uh, 
I'm going to have a hard time interpreting this one. Uh, that uh, when, uh, not only uh, the, there's a priest, uh, does he act especially on this with Mordred, of Duce, that in spirit, or do anything uh, uh, to, to, to act on it, if he does not have hierotonia, if he, he does not have ordination. Right there, Joe, Minister Joe, he has nothing. We've proved that so many times. We've proved it so many times. He has nothing. He has no spirituality. He has no grace. And yet they believe in him like, and they don't believe in a bishop or a priest or a deacon. There's so many writings of this that I need, uh, I'm trying to constrict myself to a time limit so that, uh, but uh, given the time, we will one of these days go through all of this. Uh, because it's, it's, it's in church Slavonic, uh, it's, a, uh, it's hard for me to uh, translate. Here he says that, that uh, a priest cannot do anything without a jertinik, with a table uh, of oblations, uh, because it is being blessed by by holy chrism. And the holy chrism comes only from the bishop, Archiereia. Now without a bishop, there is no sacrifice, no priest, no table of oblations, because all of that comes through the bishop. And then nobody can baptize if he does not, if he does not have Hierotonium. That means uh, ordination, because that comes from the archbishop, from the, from the bishop. And then again, uh, nobody can uh, uh, baptize without a holy mirror, because that always also comes from the bishop. So that's why I've said before that this, uh, the bishop is the rank of the apostle. Right now, especially reading um, uh, the Acts of the Apostles from Pascha until uh, Holy Pentecost, people will be listening that uh, after baptism, and uh, at that time, uh, during the apostolic times, there was no uh, mirror. It was not, uh, it, later on was it introduced into the church. But the apostles, they came and they laid hands on top of, um, of the baptized and the Holy Spirit came down. That's how it was uh, before. So, having said that, this will give you uh, uh, at least a little clue of what is a bishop or what is a priest. Okay. Oh, this is, no, I need to go way here. The last one. Maybe this part. Whenever they, they well, they try to educate us to, to say that uh, oh, because uh, Ambrosi was in, in the Greek Church that he that we accepted the heretic as a uh, uh, as a, a metropolitan that he's not valid. This is what the Pomorze taught, and today's. Uh, uh, Today's priestess, that's what they teach also. They teach that all heretics are the same, going through one, uh, through the first level, down to the third level. And they all paint them with one big black brush. But that is not the way the church teaches us how they are divided. Here we go, Kormchea, Hlava, 70, Timothy, Presbyterian, Vidiki, Serke. Or uh, about the differences of heresies in our uh, faithful 
Faith. Три чина обретаем приходящих к Святой Божьей Церкви. That is three. Not one. Соборные апостольские церкви. Боголюбезный служебничий Иоанн. И вот всех нелюбезнейших. Первый обучение есть требующий стата крещения. The first level of heresies, they, they, uh, they need to be baptized. Second, uh, we don't baptize them, but we only um, anoint them with a holy mirror. And the third, we don't baptize them and we don't anoint them with holy mirror, but we just have them uh, condemn their, their and the, uh, all the heresies. That's a rough uh, interpretation. So, there is three levels of heresies. Of course, there, there are other canons that, uh, uh, that were put, uh, put together in their own time with their own heresies of, of those times. Here, we read the second and third chapter and its representation. The book of uh, Preposition of Joseph uh, Volodsky. It, re it reads here that uh, it's, written, it's written here. Heretics will be the only ones who stay. Not not all heretics stay, uh, think, or profess their faith. Uh, together, but. Uh, but some believe in one, some believe in another. And uh, he goes to uh, numerate them. Pavlikiyane, Evatiyane, Prugi, Toyota, Those were heresies at that time. They do not believe in the one, uh, uh, one uh, triune God. Господа же нашего Иисуса Христа Богом не нарицают. They do not uh, recognize him as uh, God and his uh, incarnation. They don't accept. And some of them even uh, call him a prophet. And others call him just просто человека. Because these are these uh, heresies that he enumerated. About these uh, for, uh, first uh, level of a heretics, when the uh, they come to the uh, Orthodox faith, it is required of them to fast for for a good time and stand outside the church. And then to baptize them as pagans, because pagans, uh, uh, they were that's the way they were accepted into uh, into the Orthodox Church. And he uh, uh, these heresies, uh, he compares them to pagans, and then to give them uh, holy communion. But then there is the other, the second level of uh, heresies. Even though they are, uh, they uh, they think or they think or interpret differently. but but not how these are. And he, again, he starts to enumerate them. Novatiyani, Danatiyani, Srednici, Chetrdesetni, Sivozirdesetni, Iini, and so on. These, after they confess one. Triune God, and they recognize God as our Lord Jesus Christ. They believe in His incarnation. And uh, they uh, condemned um, uh, the heresies that they, uh, that they hold. If they want to come to the Orthodox, um, Orthodox faith, so they condemn all, uh, all the heresies. And these, 
the Holy Scriptures does not say to baptize them. No, Yahweh Krishnik Primati to accept them as they are baptized. Scorya и Божественный тайн общения текст с подобревателем. Here Иосиф Володский he says he talks about the two two levels of heresies that once we need to um, baptize and second that we uh, only accept through Holy mirror. When uh, the Pomorsky Church, when they started to bash the church, they made it very, very clear that uh, one of the things, one of their arguments, biggest arguments, was this: that they brush everybody with um, with one paintbrush. That sin, I believe in sin. That there was. No other Orthodox uh, church on planet Earth that was uh, baptizing in three emergence or emergence, huh? Emergence. Three emergence. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Three pogrojenia. That's what they taught, and that's what today the priestless are teaching. <clears throat> they're teaching their youth, and they're trying trying to indoctrinate that into our youth in schools. That all the um, all the churches on planet Earth say "Abelivari," только они одни крести, which is not the fact. Which is not the fact. That is one of the biggest, biggest deceptions, deceivements, and lies that you know, like until this day, that uh, uh, that they are spreading. Okay, who, is, who, cho who chose to be my writer here? Okay, child, come on up. I have bad penmanship. Okay. Yeah, but I take my another shirt. Heresy uh, one. A R E E. Okay, heresy one. In today's world, what uh, we live in. Heresy one: the, the Catholics. Why? Why the Catholics? Even though this is very important to understand, Catholics have an unbroken chain of apostolic succession. Their apostolic succession comes from Apostle Peter. They have an unbroken chain of apostolic succession. But their other biggest problem is they do not baptize in three immersions. They do the pouring on or the sprinkling on. And uh, with this COVID stuff that started a little bit, uh, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I saw this uh, little YouTube that, that there's an Orthodox priest and he's got a little water pistol. Catholic he's priest. blessing. <laughs> he's blessing me with, uh, with the water pistol. No, this. Okay, so that's why we rebaptize the Catholics and all Protestants because they have separated themselves from the church. They have no bishops, no priests, no deacons. This is the one holy, true Catholic and Apostolic Church that, uh, uh, that the fathers of the church have written in uh, both the first ecumenical council and the second ecumenical council. And all persons without priesthood and the priestless. The priestless, they have no, um, no clergy. All they have there is old, good old minister Joe, who has no grace no spirituality, he's just 
Mojo that came off the street. Well, he didn't come off the street, he came from the parish. But um, no ordination. Like I said in one of my presentations that even the Russian uh, uh, gospel community there on Meridian Road, even they have some form of ordination. These people, they have none. And why the priestless? They don't believe in their own God. They do not, they say they believe, but uh, their tongue is just like in a serpent. It's one that is lay on it. From one, uh, from, from one side of the mouth, they say they believe in God, but when it comes down to Holy Communion, they, uh, they, have, they have no Holy Communion. And they find every excuse on planet Earth just to say that they're living in um, emergency times and they have no uh, Holy Communion. But the Lord said, if you're going to partake of my body and blood, he will not resurrect you and he doesn't know you. Because life, spiritual life, spiritual salvation is only through um, receiving of the Holy Communion. Like uh, this, uh, this lady from, uh, I don't know, she was either from Spokane or from Washington, she goes, well, you know, just like um, the robber, he got saved without receiving Holy Communion. Yeah, she's, you know, that's right, that's right. He went to heaven um, without receiving Holy Communion. But for those kind of people, then, will be obliged to do it, that will let you live like a robber. You go rape, steal, fornicate, whatever, 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 whatever you want to do. And then when you're ready to meet the Lord, come on over, we'll flog the living peep peep out of you, we'll torture you, we'll flog you until you are like to, uh, one centimeter away from death. And then we'll let you carry your cross to your own Golgotha. You can take it there, we'll nail you. Probably the desert is going to be better because it's nice and warm and hot there. And we'll nail you. And then while you're going to be nailed on the cross, then you uh, cry unto God that Lord save me. And if He comes and saves you, that's His mercy. I think that would be a pretty good idea with the people that uh, want to use that interpretation that. Uh, we can live like the like robber, like the thief that was uh, crucified with God. That's going to be a pretty good uh, analogy for them. Then, you know, we'll let you live that life. We'll let you live that life. But the ending, you're going you're gonna to also receive, just like the thief did, you'll get flogged, uh, the living bejesus out of you. And then we'll, we'll nail you to the cross. And then you cry out to God, God, remember me in, in uh, heavens. It's a very stupid analogy with, uh, with uh, what they come up with, but that's them. They don't believe in the priesthood, they don't believe in the church. The Lord said that the gates of hell will not prevail over his church. And they teach that the gates of hell have prevailed over the church. That's why they have Minister Joe instead of uh, uh, the full clergy. And they don't believe in the Holy Communion. And then uh, they don't believe in the priesthood. All of their sacraments, lay people do it just because they, they think, they say that, that they are living in emergency times. They're, what's the sorriest thing about it is that they are um, they're fooling themselves. They're fooling their children. And they are trying to fool God. Lord knows. Lord knows that they are, you know, they're just a bunch of deceivers. And uh, the Lord just says in the, the Holy Gospel, knock and the doors will open. Search and you will find. Ask and it will be given. But they don't want to do none of that. They have, uh, you know, per capita, they have, they have, few millionaires they have a few millionaires not only millionaires I don't know probably there's, there's always billionaires because they so if they're buying airplanes and if they're buying helicopters and flying them around like 
nothing, nothing, and then they will have money to go and uh, travel around the world to look uh, and search out um, uh, the priesthood. That's something that they're going to be answering to God for. You know, I'm not going to be their judge, but uh, they will not get out their bunnies and go and search. They go to Hawaii, they go to Mexico, they go to all these other exotic places for vacations and for resting and whatever, whatever, but they will not spend not one dime for their salvation. And the elders, they know that they need um, clergy. They know that they need the, uh, the, uh, the priesthood, but because they, were, they are power hungry, they don't want to let go of that power. So these are the heresies that fall under category one. Heresies number two is all Orthodox churches with new innovations. We still hold on to those innovations pre Nikonian. So that's what separates us from the rest of the other churches. Uh, of course, this is only my analogy. The bishops or the council of bishops, they might think otherwise. But just you know, for short, quick reference, that's where heresies number two fall in. And that's the heresy number two is where Mitropolit Ambrosi came to from one of these churches, from the Greek Orthodox Church. At that time, they say that they one will believe in this. That's a whole lie. That's a whole lie. When you will believe in some. Even until this day, the Greek Orthodox, well, of course, the Greek Orthodox Church has split into uh, a few factions. But the old calendarist Greek Orthodox Church, they still, until this day, they baptize the, their, um, uh, their parishioners or their, uh, yeah, their parishioners and their, and their infants and their grown ups. They still baptize them till this day. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's um, a monastery here in uh, California, Edna, California, as a matter of fact. Uh, I've been there uh, several times. And um, I've seen their, their services. Uh, I, I, I did not happen to be wit a witness to, um, um, to any of, the, of their baptisms, but they sent me uh, flyers, uh, periodics that they put out uh, uh, once every quarter. A quarter. And uh, there's pictures there that they, yes, that they fully uh, uh, submerged their um, their, their uh, children or, or, or the, the, the people that they're ba baptizing. Some of the newer uh, uh, the Greek churches and Russian ch churches, they have started the practice of pouring on or sprinkling. Uh, especially the Moscow Patriarchate, they, uh, I even even some Patriarch, one of the There's, you know, there's pictures of that on the YouTubes where he just uh, pours on uh, to that. You know, that's living proof. And heresy number three is for anybody who has separated themselves from the Orthodox Church. They are accepted by, through heresy three, through, Pokaya, through Pokayania, and uh, that's how they are accepted. So these three levels, uh, because the priestly they don't have clergy, and you say, at night, shortly, you said something about they're all heretics, they're all heretics. No, church um, differentiates, differentiates them in three categories. I, uh, I showed you a, a couple of uh, passages there, but um, another, another thing that I wanted to touch on is this book. Yes, there's so much controversy going about with this book. Um, they blame me that uh, the this proposal, they blame me that I put it together and I published it and I did everything, everything. They're giving me all the credit that I do not deserve. I had, well, let's see, I'll just say this. A lot of people come to me for um, advice. And uh, 
They go, where is it written? I show them where it's written. Um, a lot of people have come to me. If I had anything to do with this book, that's all what I did. So I showed people where it, uh, where it was written, and uh, they did their own research. As much as I know that this book, behind this book is two years of research. Two years of praying, research, soul searching. And a heartbreak. So this, uh, the way uh, the priests, they, they think that, you know, that this thing happened overnight. This thing did not happen overnight. This is two years of research. And over a half a year to put it together and with, all, with all the translations and with all that went into this book. I strongly, strongly recommend everybody to read it. I was going to use part, uh, uh, the people that put this uh, book together, they, they took uh, um, the Pravilam of Basil the Great, the first uh, canon, which is just, uh, just as much as similar, similar, similar to what I showed you on, uh, here on the screen by uh, Iosif Volotsky and Timofey Alexandrisky. And Vasily the first, the Vasily Liriki, his uh, first Pravila uh, is just about the same thing. And uh, on the first uh, council, uh, the seventh Pravila, and the second council, eighth Pravila, or the vice versa, I forget which way, which way it is. Yeah, it, yeah, the first council is the eighth canon, and the second council is the seventh Pravila. Uh, uh, and then, uh, on the sixth ecumenical council is the 95th Pravila. So they all, different times uh, in uh, history of the church, but they all say the one and same thing, that all heresies are divided into three. They're all divided into three. I, I recommend everybody to read this book because um, I want to go into, um, uh, into um, Comparing the Orthodox uh, practice of uh, baptism and matrimony, and the people that put this together, they did a superior, I mean, they, they did a great, great, great job. And I'm going to be going by it, uh, uh, by this book. So if anybody has not uh, got one of these books, they should obtain one and read it and, and uh, follow it like the Bible. Uh, the people that put this together, yes, we've met. Uh, um, on a few occasions, and um, I gave them the material, and they put it together, or I showed them where the material was, and they put it together in their own free time, and uh, uh, and they spent the money on it. So please read this. Okay. <laughs> We get the book after after this we, uh, we can talk about that uh, come talk to me anyway um, I don't know this is maybe not the place for this but uh, uh, I guess we see you from uh, um, Latvia um, he sent me some crosses and some icons this is all pure silver. Whoever wants uh, to, to, to buy some, try to raise some money for him. Uh, he wants to go to Sabor, and he's a little short on money. And uh, he sent me some of these. Uh, uh, these are all pure silver. There's some icons here, some crosses with the silver chains, and uh, some icons of. Uh, Let's see, Svetoj uh, Avakum. And uh, after this, we can sit down. Uh, if whoever's going to be interested, they can look at it and purchase it, and I will send him the money. But otherwise, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, next Sunday, we're going to uh, be celebrating the holiday version of And um, uh, since this is a, uh, a holiday for all the, uh, all the women, 
and a woman will get a, uh, a rose. So please come. And then from uh, uh, after church is uh, finished, then we're going to go to Nakladni uh, show. And tam pa Hristos sa dimi se sa svojimi radnami. Radnami. A tak, Bogu našo poslava, meni i Hristu i Bogu i Tebe Bogu. Amin.